Inspired with Bishop Alvaro. Stay tuned. Today is day 10 of the Fast of Daniel. The program is starting in 10 minutes. Share the link facebook.com forward slash UCKG UK or libertyradio.co.uk. Welcome back. How are you? So your name is? Donald. Donald. Um, so you came here last week. We anointed you. I'm going to place on his body now this garment that is on my body. And look how, how strong. What I can do, this man will be able to do. And have you seen changes in your life? How is it? Yes. Um, I've been using the elastic bandage grip yes. for over eight, nine years. Look at this, what he's having. Look at this, what he has given here. You see, he has to, to use this to cope with the pain in both legs. You know, when people are in pain, they compress it, right? Both legs. But look at me here, people. Today, the yoke is broken. Amen? Sir. Look at me here. Come on the altar. Look at me. Before you come up, do you climb stairs fast or slow? I'm slow, a bit slow. slow. Look at me here. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing. I'm here. The sickness now is here with me. It's out of your body. Be healed. Lift up your legs like this. Climb now the way you want, like this. And since Sunday, that was my last day to use that. The last day. Who remembers him here last week? How long did you have this pain for? Oh, I've done, I did the first operation on my left knee in 1997. Okay. Then in 2005, I did another operation on my right knee in America. But the pain, did the pain go? No, 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 never went. Because this, this pain has prevented me from doing so many jobs, you know, for the past two, three years. My last job was 2012, really? and I nearly died because I was suffering from my back and my knees as well. Yeah, so five years was your last job? Yeah. Apart from voluntary work, I work in the office administrative, doing administrative duties. And to get permanent administrative duties at my age is not easy, except you do like customer services or concierge's type of thing. But now the yoke is broken, new life. Sir. Look at this here. This is your problem. Step on it there. Close your eyes. Lift up your hands. Say now, I'm healed. In Jesus' name. You are not with, you wearing the elastic band anymore? No. You saw changes in one week. Seven days. Yes. And Mr. Donald, you, you mentioned that you came to church many years ago, yes. right? Yes. You see, he came many years ago and then he stopped coming. So how long were you away from the church? How long, more or less? How many years? About two years. Right. You know, because I changed location. You stopped completely? Yes. So I was going to other church. Right. Yeah. You see, he was going to other churches. He stopped coming here completely. And recently now, what happened that you came back? Um, I normally go to church, even though I stopped coming to UCKG because of certain reason. I was going to another church. So I was planning to go to church on the Sunday. So the Saturday evening, I, had, I received a text. I was saying, how these people can't leave me alone? Why? They, can, they just can't leave me alone? Because you always they text me. The church always sent text messages. We call people. But you were always saying no. No, right? Yes. And, and last they, Saturday, they just forced me to say, change today. Go to Finsbury Park. That's why I made the decision to come here. Last Saturday, he received a text message and he said, I'm going to go to Finsbury Park. And look what happens. Can you see you, you follow the direction of God and here you are standing free from your pains. And this is just the beginning, Mr. Donald. Can you see? Treatment, surgery, the pain was there. He believed we prayed over him. Move your legs there now, sir. Do exactly what you couldn't do. Well, I couldn't run faster. No. People, tell him to run. Go ahead. Say run. 
run, run faster. Yes. Look at that. Yes. Run, 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 run. Show joy, God, people. You see, this is Jesus who is alive. You're going to have great jobs. You're going to be used by God as well to show everyone that He is alive. Before you go back to your place, run here once again, Mr. Donald. You have to run here. Yes. Show everyone what God has done for you. Look at that. <laughs> go ahead, sir. New life. God bless you. Since coming here, I've learned how to use um, faith, but in a practical way. Um, usually sometimes you, you only know about God, but you don't really know that you can challenge or even approach Him, you know, and ask something and get something from Him. So it's more practical, it's more alive, so yeah. I expect for a nice warm welcome. Everyone's nice to me as I come inside. Um, a spiritual um, connection with God, um, a strong connection as well. Yeah, it's very important. Usually when you approach a pastor, you see that he's sincere, he wants to help you. It shows that it's a sincere place to be. Be inspired with Bishop Alvaro. The program is starting in four minutes. Before the 21 days, I was someone who I suffered from uncontrollable fear. I was very doubtful as well about my spiritual condition and about myself as well. I suffered from self-doubt. Um, as well as that, I was very insecure. So spiritually and as a person, I was very insecure. I knew that this was an opportunity for me to receive God. Funnily enough, when I, when I entered the 21 days, I thought I did have the Holy Spirit. I genuinely thought I've already got God inside of me. I've left, a, I've left behind sin. I'm not living in the wrong way anymore. I'm not doing what's wrong. I have God inside of me. But when I entered the 21 days, I understood from going to the services and listening to the people that were there to help me during the 21 days, they made me realize that it's not about leaving behind the sin. It's not about leaving behind the wrong things. It's about who you are inside. Is there still roots from your past that are still there? And I saw, I analyzed myself within that 21 days and I saw that I still had doubts. I still had fears. I still didn't know who I was spiritually. I didn't know where I was with God. Um, and this brought a lot of doubt. And that's when I realized within that 21 days that I didn't have the Holy Spirit. And I had to start from scratch in that 21 days. To, to find God and to receive him inside of me. Um, I really took time to seek him, not only in the church, but even outside of the church. When I was at work during my lunch breaks, usually I'd use my lunch breaks to be on social media, I'd listen to music, but I used those times, those breaks to seek God. I'd go to the toilets, I'd seek God, I would read my Bible. I really learned how to cling to the Bible, how to cling to the Word of God within the 21 days. I read my Bible much more. I just invested in the Word of God so much more and I depended on it. And I wanted to show God that I really wanted him without depending on music, music or any any external things just my relationship with God me speaking to him praying more to him that's what I did I wasn't usually attending night vigils at that time but that that night I sacrificed my time to go and I sought God in that moment I remember the bishop was saying you need to be mature when seeking God you can't be emotional you can't be there crying and being emotional about it you need to really tell God your situation and tell him that it's not fair if you've left behind sin you know you, you want to move forward um, and you need God's spirit to do that and that's exactly what I did in that night vigil. I saw it as my opportunity to be mature and to make a decision on who I wanted to be from now on. So I spoke to God on that on that night and in the moment of the seeking and um, of the praying that we were doing, I received peace. Um, after all of the seeking, I had a peace inside of me that is very unexplainable. Um, I just knew that God lives inside of me now. All of the doubts and the fears, I, I said to myself, even if they, they're there afterwards, I know God is with me now and I can overcome them with him. So now I'm at peace. Um, I'm at a stage at my life where I know what I want for my life. I know who I am as well, spiritually and as a person. I'm so much more confident. I'm so much more bolder. I am much more stronger in my mind. I used to be very weak minded before due to the doubts and the fears, but now I'm stronger in my mind and I know where I'm going. Be 
Inspired with Bishop Alvaro. The program is about to start. Get ready. Be Inspired on Liberty Radio. A very good evening to all of you, and today is the 10th day of the 21 day fast of Daniel. Can you imagine? 10 days we've been here together, inspiring all of you, seeking the presence of God. I'm happy to see that many people have been blessed. Thank you all once again for the emails, and please bear with me. I'm answering the emails here, I'm checking them myself. There's still some emails that we need to, to answer. But bear with us, soon you're going to get your response. Thank you for sharing your experience with me. We have been receiving questions as well. People are asking for clarifications on different subjects. That's great. And here we are to help you. Please continue sending us emails if you have questions, doubts concerning the 21 days fast of Daniel or the baptism in the Holy Spirit or anything else that... You may need clarifications or answers for. Here we are to help you. Our email address is bishop at uckg.org. Bishop at uckg.org. I'm going to be reading all of them. And as I said, bear with us. We are receiving a, a large amount of emails. And you can imagine it's not easy for us to respond promptly to all of them. But surely you're going to be getting your answer soon. Let's listen to a testimony together now. And let's go. Let's continue sharing the link of the program. When I say sharing the link, if you are on Facebook, share the Facebook link. YouTube, YouTube link. And wherever you are, share the link there. You can also type libertyradio.co.uk. Let people know that they can listen to us through different channels, different means. Let's go. Let's invite more people to connect. We'll be right back. Before the 21 days came, I was a very depressed person. So I went through depression for like a number of years. I was really down, I was very negative, like a very, very negative of myself. I was also really insecure. I couldn't even look in the mirror at myself. Like when I saw myself, I would just cry. Like I didn't have the happiness, I didn't have the comfort in myself. I didn't love myself as like I should really do. I was, oh my gosh, I was really influenced by my friends. I was just, sad I was just depressed every single day I'll just cry before I you know came to the church I was really influenced by my friends so like anything my friends said I would do it like I would do so much stuff for them I would go fight for them I would put them before my mom my whole family so I had to cut them off it was really really hard because when it did happen they would like say stuff that I don't like this new I don't like this new person but I had to do what I had to do I had to you know show God that you come first and my friends Sorry, they have to, I have to move on from them. And also my sister, so me and my sister weren't speaking for eight years, so we lived in the same house, but it was constant fighting, arguing, like the police, everything. So it was really, really hard. She did a lot of stuff to me, it's like my family put us through a lot. So I held a grudge towards her. I held a lot of hate towards her. So during the 21 days, it was really hard, but I had to like apologize to her. And it wasn't something I thought I would do because, so many people would come and speak to me, like my mom, my granddad, my my dad in Nigeria, my aunties, my uncles, saying to me, oh, say sorry to your sister. I was like, no, I'm not saying sorry to her. Like, I didn't do anything. But then it was just God that really helped me to really see the end of it. It helped me to see that this is, like, you need to say sorry to your sister. So I had to, like, plan everything. And I said sorry to her. That was the big thing I did during 21 days. As a result of the fasting, I received the Holy Spirit um, in day 14. So I was on the train going to uni and I was seeking, I was praying, everything. And even all these doubts, all these thoughts came into my mind. Like it was so much, but I had to rebuke it. I was really seeking and, and then the assurance came. Like it's not a feeling, it's more of like an assurance. And I knew that God was with me. So then since that day, I'm more happier, I'm more peaceful. I have more trust in God. For me, it was like a transformation. I didn't, how can I say, when I came into 21, I didn't expect to finish like this. 
So now, like, I'm so happy. Like, what I experience is like, you can't buy that no water. It's only from God that it, it happened. So yeah. You're listening to Be Inspired on Liberty Radio. Welcome back. And today's the 10th day of the 21 days fast of Daniel. 21 days we've been here together. Look how great. Let's keep going on this pace. We still have 11 more days until the great day, September 3rd. It will be very, very special. All of us will be here in church in one accord. The church will become the upper room. And look how amazing. One of our bishops there in Israel will be ministering the outpouring of the Holy Spirit live. Yes, all these CKGs all over the world will gather together in one accord to experience the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So September 3rd is going to be our day of Pentecost. It will be amazing. Get ready. Let's invite people to come, young, old. Yes, the whole church has to be full of souls on that day. And tonight, we're going to be revealing to you the 10 main reasons that can impede a person from being baptized in the Holy Spirit. There are a couple of reasons, but these 10 are very common. So please, Stop writing on the chat for a moment. Let's talk about these reasons together. I'm going to talk about the first five here right now. And straight after the break, we're going to give the other five. And we're going to be seeking the Holy Spirit together. So let's see here the first five reasons that can impede a person from being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And the first reason is anxiety to speak in tongues. This has been an issue in the church. Many people have been speaking to us. Many don't understand about the gift of tongues. Others, until today, they thought that the gift of tongues was a confirmation, a proof that they were baptizing the Holy Spirit. There is a lot of doubts. There is a lot of questions when we speak about tongues, the gift of tongues. As I mentioned here, many people get anxious when they're seeking the Holy Spirit, they, all they think about is the moment they're going to start speaking in tongues. Please, when you seek the Holy Spirit, don't have this expectation. Just pour out your heart there before God. And as you praise Him, as you worship Him, this will happen naturally. You don't need to worry about how it's going to happen, when it's going to happen. Focus on expressing your admiration to God, expressing what is inside of you. This is what you should be concerned about. Don't worry about speaking in tongues. This coming Friday, I'm going to be talking more about speaking in tongues. We're going to get deep into this subject, clarifying doubts and helping you to understand very well about it. Even you who have questions, send me questions before Friday. I could speak about it here in the program if you, if you don't see it as a problem. I'm sure that Many of your doubts can be the doubts of a lot of people. So anxiety to speak in tongues. Don't be anxious. Let's go for the second one. Concern for the salvation of family members or other people. During the seeking of the Holy Spirit, you should not worry about your family. You have to learn to prioritize the Holy Spirit at that moment. Don't be worried, concerned about family, the needs of your family members. This has been a big problem, a big issue, an impediment in people's lives. And the third one, let's go. The third reason that can impede a person from being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Requests for material blessings mentioned at the time of praising. In the same way you have to put aside the needs of your family, you have to put aside every other need you have. During the moment of praising, don't start saying, Oh Lord, and please open the doors for me. I need a, a job this week. I need to pay my bills. No. First, you seek God. First things first. Prioritize the Holy Spirit. And you can be sure 
the other things will be added as we use our faith together, naturally the doors will be open. But please, during the moment of praising, during the moment of seeking, seeking of the Holy Spirit, don't think about your physical needs. Fourth reason, lack of sincere repentance. How many people, they are there asking God to fill their hearts, their lives, but they haven't really abandoned their old ways. They haven't assumed that they have to change. So many, because of lack of repentance, they don't experience the Holy Spirit. They are not baptizing the Holy Spirit. Remember that before God can fill you with His Spirit, first you have to empty yourself. Empty yourself from all the cares of this life, sinful habits, abandon them. Whatever you see that doesn't please God, you have to abandon. Turn your back on that sincerely. God knows when people are saying, oh, I will change. But one hour after that prayer, God knows that they're going to go back to their old ways. That's why we have to be sincere. Yes, to truly abandon our old lives. And yes, as God sees that there is repentance, you are sincere. As you ask him to give you his spirit, he will do that. And the fifth one, grudges against someone. I'm going to talk more about this one after the break. Yes, because there will be something special that we'll be doing this Sunday concerning this fifth reason that can impede a person from being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Don't go anywhere. God is forgiveness. You can't maintain a relationship with Him without receiving forgiveness or without wanting to give. How many people are unable to receive the Holy Spirit because they insist on cultivating their hearts? Sorrows, grudges, resentments, hatred, and even revenge. And some claim many motives and reasons. But the Word of God determines obedience, regardless of motive or reason. Sunday, the 27th, the second Sunday of the Fast of Daniel, the Sunday of Forgiveness, so that the Holy Spirit may find space in you and may dwell in your heart. At 7.30 a.m., come in fasting, at 10 a.m. and at 6 p.m., here in Finsbury Park or in any other branch in the UK. You're listening to Be Inspired on Liberty Radio. Welcome back. And tonight we are revealing to you reasons that can impede a person from being baptized in the Holy Spirit. So far, we spoke about anxiety to speak in tongues, concern for the salvation of family members or other people, requests for material blessings mentioned at the time of praising, lack of sincere repentance, and now the fifth reason, grudges against someone. A grudge, as you know, it's a big impediment. You who have a grudge against someone, you may ask God to feed with his spirit, you may beg him, but as long as this grudge is there, you will not be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So you have to forgive, to let go of these grudges. And this coming Sunday, especially at 10 a.m. in all the UCKGs here in the United Kingdom, and also we're going to be doing this in all the UCKGs in the world, Sunday will be the Sunday of forgiveness. If you have been struggling to forgive, to let go of your past, you who don't know what else to do, join us this Sunday because... God will help you. Yes, with man it may be impossible, but with God all things are possible. God will help you to forgive, to let go of everything that has been there maybe for many years. Maybe you have grudges against people who have passed away. Imagine, and you are trying, but you can't let go. It's been hard 
maybe it's it's been like mission impossible for you to forgive people. Come to one of our UCKGs and we are going to help you. This Sunday, God is going to help you to forgive. And once you forgive, you are cleansed, washed. You are forgiven by God. Certainly, as you ask God to fill you with his spirit, he will do that. Please visit our website, uckg.org, for you to know more about addresses. And as I mentioned before, this Sunday at 10 a.m. will be the Sunday of forgiveness. Let's continue here with the reasons. Number six, personal vanity. There are people who wish to receive the Holy Spirit just because others have received. Seven, fear of receiving an evil spirit instead of the Holy Spirit. We spoke about this yesterday, the day before yesterday. God will not give you a serpent if you ask him for his spirit. Don't let these worries, these doubts be there. Hang on to the word of God. If these kind of thoughts come to your mind saying you're going to be deceived, you say it's written. If I ask the Father, he will give me his spirit. He will not let me be deceived. The eighth reason now. Self-doubts about one's merit or readiness to receive the Holy Spirit. You know that there are many people who say, I'm not perfect, I don't deserve. We will never be perfect. But God sees your surrender. He sees that you want him more than anything, than anyone else. And even though we don't deserve anything, as we said before, he promised, he made a promise that if we ask, he will give us his spirit. If we give, we receive. Can you see? As we mentioned before, if you surrender your all to God, God will surrender his all to you. No matter your past, what you did, when you truly repent and surrender your all to God, at that moment, you are ready to receive the Holy Spirit. Nine, the person has not yet been completely free from evil spirits. Yes, there are many people who have not been delivered yet. And of course, they must be delivered. And then the Spirit of God now will come to live in them. But first, this demonic force, this evil spirit must live. So now the Holy Spirit may come to live in that person. And the last reason that can impede a person from being baptized in the Holy Spirit, number 10, is hidden sins or a guilty conscience. Yes, there are many people who have not confessed their sins. They have done many things and they haven't yet confessed it to God wholeheartedly. And as you know, we need to do it. We need to confess our sins to him so he may come and wash away our sins. And right now, we are going to humble ourselves and pour out our hearts here at Jesus' feet. If you have been living sins, if you have any sin that you have not confessed, if there is anything that is bothering you, if your conscience is accusing you, so confess to Jesus everything you have done and let go. Turn your back on that. Abandon this. Yes, start living a new life. Repent once and for all. And you can be sure, Jesus will forgive you and he will give you his spirit. Let's talk to God now. This is the time of prayer. Let us now talk with our God in this faith that he is listening to us at every moment. Our Lord, our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you to listen to the voice of these people who are humbling themselves and they are finding out that there are certain things that need to be abandoned, like grudges, sinful habits, a lifestyle that doesn't please you. My Lord, wash away their sins now, those who are confessing to you everything now. They are not afraid, ashamed of telling you that they lied, they cheated, they did something that they even feel ashamed of saying, but now they are saying to you, Lord. So forgive them. 
have mercy on them. Look at their desire to change, Lord. Look at their sincerity now and wash away their sins. There where you are, humble yourself, confess everything to God, pour out your heart. If you have grudges against someone, if you are living sin, if there is something hidden there, confess to God and say, Lord, forgive me. I abandon all of this. I don't want this garbage, this rubbish in my life. I want my heart to be clean. I want to be clean and ready to be filled with your spirit. Pour out your heart right now. the name of Jesus. You don't need to say anything now. Jesus sees your sincerity. He sees that you want to change. You don't want to hate anymore. You are willing to forgive and you are even saying, I forgive this person. I don't want to hold these grudges, bitterness. I don't want to live in sin. I'm sick and tired of my mind accusing me, accusations and torments. I want to be free clean. I want to be a different person, to do what pleases God. So now be forgiven. Yes, He washes away your sins. He cleanses your heart, your mind, your soul. Yes, your past is erased right now. Be free from your past. Yes, and as you decide to forgive, because you decided to forgive, your sins are forgiven. Yes, Jesus forgives you right now thank you my father and now lord come and fill them with your spirit yes there where you are in the name of jesus if you can lift up your hands if you cannot just agree with me in the name of jesus receive the holy spirit yes you who want him more than anything more than anyone else you who considered him as your treasure your heart's desire is the Holy Spirit. You want Him more than anything, more than anyone else. Receive Him now. Be baptized in the Holy Spirit. All of you, be renewed. Yes, be revived. Be strengthened right now. You who are feeling down, sad, weak. Be lifted up right now. The Spirit of God empowers you right now. Hallelujah. Have your moment with God. Worship Him. Adore Him. There where you are with all of your heart. Thank you for renewing us, reviving us. Thank you for baptizing those who were there, thirsty for you, but now their thirst has been quenched. Thank you, Lord. Amen.
You are blessed. Let's continue in this faith every night here on the radio, receiving the message, the direction of God to us, and also we're going to continue seeking God with all of our hearts. Tomorrow we're going to be back here once again at 10 p.m. Tomorrow is Thursday, and in church, in all these services, we're going to be seeking the Holy Spirit. Prepare yourself, especially 8 o'clock in the evening here in our headquarters. We're going to have our meeting, the Love Talk live meeting. There will be a prayer for all the couples, singles. We're going to be blessing your love life, but also we will be seeking the Holy Spirit once again. If you're in London, our headquarters address is 232 Seven Sisters Road and 4 3 and X. The service tomorrow will be at 8 o'clock in the evening. If you want to know more about addresses in the United Kingdom, you can go to uckg.org. uckg.org. See you tomorrow at the same time. God bless you all. And let's continue giving our all. This 21 days fast of Daniel will be special. We are going to make it special. Bye-bye. Stay tuned. Don't miss tomorrow, the 11th day of the fast of Daniel. Be inspired. Every evening at 10 p.m. here at Liberty Radio, tune in for a motivational talk program, bringing you to inspirational messages and practical advice on different life issues. You can also chat live with the presenter and share any questions during the program on libertyradio.co.uk. Be inspired every day at 10 p.m. on Liberty Radio.